The key content of today is to identify, discuss and define the current challenges in professional discussions about active housing. What do you identify as the main challenges under this umbrella called active housing that we face today? Well, clearly, climate change and the way human actions are changing the planet in ways we don't even really understand uh, is something that has to be addressed and addressed quickly. So the speed of the challenge is uh, very critical. Uh, there's also a need to understand the relationship between individual buildings and communities. Many architects and building industry uh, professionals understand the, the issue to be f from the buildings first, but the connections between buildings, where people live, the community aspect is every bit as important. You could have an entire town of sprawling suburbia uh, made of net zero buildings and it would still present a tremendous environmental issue through the way it takes up uh, good farmland and the requirement for automobile transportation between it. So understanding the community connection is very, very important. This discussion is leading to a lot of policy decisions and frameworks and metrics and rating systems that can be very confusing. And there was a lot of discussion today about how a system can't be like your VCR manual. It has to be easy to understand. It has to be fair to different people at different living standards in different countries. And I think coming up with an understanding that sustainability is not all about policy, but at the same time allowing different levels of government to set policies and targets so that we can have a common uh, ground of understanding. What do you believe are the best answers to these challenges and why? There has to be some kind of vision uh, for us all to uh, work towards, and by that I mean uh, there's a role for uh, the arts, for designers, for writers to capture what it might be like to live in this world so that it's not seen as a world of limits but seen as a world of possibilities. Uh, the other thing that really has to be an answer to all of this is we re-examine the way we make things. Uh, I work for uh, someone who created a really earth-changing uh, philosophy called Cradle to Cradle and uh, McDonough and Browngard's notion of cradle to cradle suggests that all of industry has to be redesigned. Now that is a great answer to the question of, of the problems we face if we look at the possibilities for making everything we build and every material we make and every product we make better so that it has a positive effect and so we know where it comes from and what's in it and where it's going. I think the world will become a lot more familiar to us. The energy challenge concerns the fact that buildings consume approximately 40% of all produced energy. To address climate change and reduce the global energy consumption, it is crucial to consider using renewable energy sources as part of the solution, also in terms of securing energy supply. How do you foresee that we best can confront the energy challenge in buildings in the future? Energy efficiency upgrades need to be really comprehensible to the public and one of the biggest challenges that we face with energy is that in housing in particular in residential sector there are so many different kinds of houses uh, people live in apartments in cities they live on farms these are all different residential situations and the the community relationship the relationship to uh, an energy network and the age of the house and its its value across a range of attributes is all quite different so I envision a uh, real increase in research into what exists in terms of existing housing stock so that it can be revalued, not with today's real estate conception of value, but in terms of its possibilities for reuse, whether it has good stru structure, whether it has the potential to be energy efficient in renovations. And only when each building owner can truly understand what they have can we know how to come up with strategies for improving the energy efficiency. Then we'll need plug-in systems of energy upgrades. Maybe it's weather stripping or windows, it may be any number of things, but I think the systems that are beginning to look at evaluating each house as if it's a large commercial office building with building inspectors and energy models are unrealistic. I think it has to be something where you identify a house that's like yours and you use the things that worked on the houses like yours that are effective. 
Uh, and I think finally there has to be a way of understanding what's happening in uh, your building or in your house. The means of communication with the conditions and the weather outside need to be much more transparent. Right now that happens through programmable thermostats that are only marginally comprehensible and I think has to be much more tied to experience and comfort, it has to be guilt-free, it has to allow someone who's old and feel, feeling cold to feel okay to turn up the heat, and it has to allow someone who's active and coming in and out of the house to uh, automate it and make it seamless and intuitive. So the control systems, I think, are a, uh, a real opportunity for uh, research and development as well. The living factor challenge concerns the fact that we spend 90% of our time indoors, but less than 30% of the building mass contributes to or provides a healthy indoor climate. As humans, we need fresh air and daylight when we are indoors. It has a positive effect on our health and well-being as well as on our ability to learn. How do you foresee that we can confront the living factor challenge in buildings in the future? One of my heroes in the sustainability movement is David Orr, who's a professor at Oberlin College and a writer and lecturer who's been quite uh, inspiring to, uh, for, uh, to me and my, many of my colleagues. He defines sustainability as the careful meshing of human purposes with the flows of nature. And I think the answer to the, the livability factor part of the active housing challenge is the connection between, uh, between humans and nature and in understanding how that meshing of the flows of nature takes place so that I, pretty much every other benefit of the livability factor will flow from how closely we connect to nature and how we see that as a, as a model. What is active housing in your definition and how do you believe it is relevant to the work that you and your organization carries out? Active housing relates very strongly to uh, the work that uh, my firm and I have been doing for the past 15 years and I think it's a, a very good attempt to make accessible uh, the concepts of sustainability that have been framed in many, many different ways. I think it, it resolves the questions down to the physical, technical side of sustainability that have to do with energy and climate change and things that can be measured and quantified uh, that maybe we can't experience as directly, along with those other things that are part of our lives, a part of community and uh, its light and air and our comfort and our connection with nature and the rest of society.